Recording in progress. That means we have actually begun. It is 12 o'clock, 12.01 here on the East Coast in the United States, Keene, New Hampshire. And uh, it is time. That means it's time. Saturday at noon for Wonder Streets, your health from the ground up. My name is Rebecca Becky Montrone. I have a business here in Keene called Wondrous Roots, and I am a holistic healthcare practitioner with a degree in holistic nutrition and also an herbalist. So I meet people um, from all walks of life with all manner of health problems and uh, do what I can to try to help with whatever health conditions they are concerned about. And um, I can be reached here at the office, 603-439-2603. Can also be reached out to from either of our websites, shopwondersuits.com or wondersuits.org. Uh, those messages come to my private email and I will get back to you. I see clients all over the country and some out of the country, um, actually, and uh, we do that this way via Zoom when that is necessary. And of course, plenty of local clients. Uh, so many of you are among them. So what else do I want to say? Our, our um, open store shop business hours here, we have many uh, nutritional supplements and a lot of the products that we make ourselves here on site uh, are, are 9.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. And uh, we also have, you know, uh, our, our complete store is on the web at shopwindowstreets.com. Uh, you can easily place orders there. I'm trying to think if there's something I'm supposed to say that I haven't said. And I don't think so. So welcome. Welcome. It's good to have you here for another um, riveting session of Wonder Streets, your health from the ground up. I am super. Um, this one's kind of a fun one. It's kind of a, like a little uh, different topics and things that catch my eye and that are interesting to me and I think will be to you as well. So I'm going to go to my website. I, probably, I might share my screen along and along today, probably will um, actually, because there's some cool things to click on there. So let me uh, get that going. I did pull up my, um, just have to change my here. There we go. I think that will do it. I haven't shared it yet, but I'm getting there. All right, so if I share this, make sure I can see you again to participate in this webinar. You can go to the chat and type. You can go to the uh, Q&A down somewhere on your screen. I, I think it depends on what device you're on, but <clears throat> somewhere there you should see Q&A where you can also type. And you can, or you can raise your hand. And uh, when you raise your hand, and then I will see, I will be notified and I will call on you and I can then, um, I can then call on you and you can talk. We can all hear you. So I think that's what I wanted to say. Oh, I'm going to stop my share for a second. I have to tell you something funny. So this morning, <clears throat> this is kind of cool because it's all about natural health, but it's kind of a funny story. So I got up this morning and I, I don't know, I'm jumping on my trampoline, but at some point in time, I scratched my forehead. And I scratch something off and, and it bleeds, right? It starts to bleed. You can see it right there. Um, that's what bangs are for, I guess. But anyway, <clears throat> but there, there must, the, the, the face must just be loaded with blood vessels that are really close to the skin. So <clears throat> it bleeds and it bleeds. So finally I get a, um, what I use for, for bleeding if I get cut or something at home is cayenne pepper, but it's very precarious to put cayenne pepper right up here, right? For obvious reasons. So I stuck a piece of Kleenex on there and went about my business for a couple of hours. And of course, you know, but then when I went to wash my face, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> even though I was gentle and tried to like just lightly, anyway, it bled again. So I'm like, what am I going to do? So <clears throat> I went and got the cayenne pepper and I'm like, okay, so just be careful. So I'm dabbing cayenne pepper on here, but you know, it is falling and like I'm covering my eye and it's not really working and it's hard to get it on there because it's powder and it's falling and I'm not like this. Yeah, I did at one point in time take the shaker and go like that. Um, <clears throat> and, and it just was not ideal. Uh, it does work really well. Like say you had a cut, excuse me, on your finger or something like that and you can just get the cayenne pepper on there. It works great. <clears throat> but I could not excuse 
I could not seem, anyway, it wasn't working. So I thought of vitamin K because vitamin K, it does not, vitamin K will never overclot you if you're, if your blood is too thick, but um, <clears throat> it does help with blood clotting. So I went and I got one of my vitamin K capsules, which has like a, it's a liquid gel, which was great because it wasn't powder. And I put it on a Q-tip and, and, you know, dabbed off the blood and dabbed it on there and it worked. It worked. So there's today, my session is called health tips. Don't miss health tips. So there's one for you. Now, not everybody, you know, has a first aid kit of like vitamin K. Um, but of course I would, right? So, uh, and the other thing is I take uh, natokinase and um, serapeptase every morning. So actually when this whole all happened, I was walking over to the supplement cabinet to get my natokinase and my serapeptase to take with my liter of water with uh, all this other stuff in it. And so here I'm taking stuff that keeps my blood nice and thin <clears throat> while I'm having this bleeding. Um, that, but that's just, you know, neither here nor there. But I just thought it was kind of funny. Um, so someone came in yesterday. Um, Jean came in, who's often with us. I'm not sure if she is today. Uh, I'm not looking at my whole list because I've got other stuff up there. But um, <clears throat> she had asked, and I was with a client, so I didn't get to talk with her. But I have a message that I haven't gotten back to her yet. But um, would <clears throat> natokin taking natokinase interfere with uh, vitamin K? No, it doesn't. So just so you know that, um, that's, this isn't how I know what happened this morning, but I'm, that's the answer anyway. No, you can take things that digest fibrin in your blood and <clears throat> not worry about, is it messing up with your, the usefulness of your vitamin K. But um, again, wasn't that cool? That was a fun little experiment. And, you know, I'm glad. Otherwise I would be sitting here right now with a Band-Aid up here. Uh, there was, that was like the only option. This was like, I was doing this with the vitamin K at about 25 after 11. So you can see, um, I would have had to just band-aid. Um, <clears throat> so nature's band-aid, one of nature's band-aids. Oh, and another thing that's really interesting is, um, <clears throat> Matthew Wood. I've done a couple of, um, programs on, um, herbs out of one of his books. Uh, we did, um, plantain, but first we did, sweet leaf, Monarda fistulosa. And <clears throat> I now have enrolled in a botany course with his um, institute. And so I get the newsletters and he had one this week, uh, one of his things that had a few of his blogs. And one of them was his top 10 um, herbs for like your herbal um, first aid kit or whatever. And I think you'll find that really interesting too. But one of them of course, and I would know this about Matthew Wood because I learned about yarrow, Achillea millifolium from him. And yarrow is really amazing. It's a beautiful white flower. It grows very, um, it's very, uh, you know, endemic to this area. Uh, almost looks like um, Queen Anne's lace, but it's not. The, the, um, the flowers are much tighter and they're more, they're not like frilly like Queen's Anne lace. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, yarrow is fantastic for stopping hemorrhage. And I thought this morning, as this was going on, that I should have some yarrow at home. Some yarrow tincture would be fine, right? Because tincture is, is liquid. It's an alcohol. I could have just taken my Q-tip and dabbed that. And that would have, yarrow would have stopped it instantly. Um, and if it had gotten in my eye, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have worried about it burning like cayenne pepper. <clears throat> so that's my little intro, I guess. But that's my experience with natural things this morning, trying to solve a simple <clears throat> problem. Okay, so I am going to share my screen, like I said I was going to before. <clears throat> Some really cool things. I'm going to show you a really interesting app um, <clears throat> that you can use. If you've had a chance to look at my newsletter yet, um, if not, you can look later on, I think. I go like that. I can still see everything. I can still see you. I just got to get my chat and my participants back in view. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't look like Jean is here. So I will make sure I reach out to her. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, this is, uh, we'll start. I, I don't know if I want to really go in the order. I've listed them here. Let's do, <clears throat> let's jump around. Hmm. 
All right. Well, okay. Maybe I will go up here to the order I did it. <clears throat> okay. So we'll start hand sanitizer. So we talk about these things um, back, you know, in the COVID, when COVID first started, I mean, people were, you couldn't even buy this stuff. It was like <clears throat> the shelves were bare hand sanitizer. And, um, and I get that, you know, there are times when you want to <clears throat> not to be especially careful about what you get on your hands. Um, I never use hand sanitizer. I just wash my hands with soap and water, which I think is best and not antibacterial soap. But uh, we were on our trip to Philly uh, <clears throat> beginning of March and uh, we bought these wet ones, right? Because when you're on a train, that's when you want something like this, right? You're going to be eating something. You're going to be doing something. You've been touching all this stuff. That's when you want something like this. And I didn't have any of my um, natural stuff with me. But um, in any case, this type of a thing is very, very popular. And a lot of people have for years, even before COVID or whatever, been using antibacterial like dial on their bathroom counter. Um, we have antibacterial this, antibacterial that. Talk, talked a lot about how that's not necessarily a good thing all the time because you want to be exposed to germs. You want to build up your resistance to things. You don't want everything to be nasty, nasty, neat. Uh, sparkly, sparkly, no bacteria. Bacteria we coexist with. I talked a little while ago about um, how they have much more Alzheimer's disease where there is less diversity of microbiome and in, in countries that are underdeveloped, where there are more parasites and worms and things like that uh, than we do in, in developed nations and talking about how underdeveloped nations are looking at how to prevent diseases like Alzheimer's disease as they become more developed. So isn't that really interesting? Did you know, I was reading in, uh, in this book, uh, Death by Calcium, which um, fascinating, got to dig into this this, this week. Um, we are, uh, the United States it has the is number 33 in the world in life expectancy, but we spend the most on healthcare. I mean, right there, what does that tell you? We're doing something wrong over here. Um, but anyway, the problem, so anyway, there is, a, there is a benefit to microbial diversity. And so we don't want to um, constantly be getting rid of everything with an antibacterial product. And here it says, routinely disinfecting your body and surroundings may actually cause more harm than good in the long run. Not only do they promote the development of drug resistant bacteria, antibacterial compounds such as triclosan and quarter, quaternary, quaternary ammonium compounds CACs or quats have also been linked to a number of harmful health effects. So we're going to go there. And this is the thing that the big thing in the world we're living in right now in this, um, in many places in the world, but here in the United States, certainly is we are just living life normally. As we think we're eating food normally, we're just living in a clean way. We're living responsibly that we have no idea the, plethora, the multitude of chemicals we are exposed to and are taking into ourselves one way or the other through what we breathe, through what we eat, through what we put on our skin, um, through what we sit on. I, I mean, you name it. Uh, so this is, is a problem. Um, and it's something we can't ignore. And so when there are warnings about certain things, you know, we need to be on top and we need to be guarding ourselves and we need to be aware of things that are um, are there and be careful. Uh, so I'm going to just um, see. I have to shrink my screen a little bit just so I can um, see the whole text. Okay. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I want you to be aware of this. So <clears throat> routinely disinfecting your body and surroundings. So, okay, we did that. <clears throat> research, research has shown triclosan is a potent endocrine disruptor that interferes with thyroid function. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I've talked about endocrine disrupting chemicals before. It's very, very important. Sunscreens, right there, bingo, huge. And 
we start putting sunscreens as soon as a, an infant, you know, is able to go outside. Uh, got to be careful. There are good products out there, but you've got to find them. We're going to talk about the um, Environmental Working Workers Group. I'm going to be talking about that shortly. And a really cool app you can put on your phone or you can use on your computer to um, check out products. But the, I'm not a big phone person, if anybody knows me. I'm not one to – I never have my phone when I'm in the store. But um, – <clears throat> But there's a really cool app and you can just scan a product and you can see if there are concerns about it. Isn't that cool? I know a lot of you will really love that, but I'll tell you more about it in a moment if you don't know about it. But anyway, <clears throat> research has shown triclosan is a potent endocrine disruptor that interferes with thyroid function. Man, we have so much thyroid uh, disruption. So many people with thyroid uh, health conditions, whether they are actually diagnosed <clears throat> or not, um, a lot of people with subclinical, what appears to be hypothyroidism in the way their bodies behave, cold hands, cold feet, Raynaud's syndrome, maybe um, hair falling out, <clears throat> skin dry, constipation, um, <clears throat> very tired in the morning, can't seem to get up, brain, brown, brain fog. Uh, what else can we say? Um, another big one, feeling stiff in the morning when you first get up. We have a lot of that that people say, oh, your TSH is fine. Doesn't tell you the whole story, but anyway, endocrine disrupt disrupting chemicals can, can promote a, 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 a variety, a variety of health problems, including obesity, breast, ovarian, prostate, and testicular cancer, preterm and low birth weight babies, precocious puberty in girls, and undistended testicles in boys. <clears throat> the U.S. the U.S. FDA banned triclosan from soap products in two, 2016 due to suspected health risks, but it's still found, here we go, in many toothpaste, mouthwashes, and hand sanitizers. Triclosan also makes its way into our food supply. It's routinely found in lakes, rivers, streams, wastewater, irrigation water, and biosolids applied to fields as fertilizer. And so here it is, right? We start, it's in things, we find out that it's bad, the FDA, you know, finally gets around to saying we ban this from soap products. But guess what? The cat's out of the bag. So the toothpaste out of the tube. The uh, horse is out of the gate. You've got this stuff is now in our environment. Lakes, rivers, streams, wastewater, irrigation water. <clears throat> so these cats are found in cleaning products, hand sanitizers, personal care products, many kinds of wipes surface, baby, hand, and disinfecting wipes, and certain pesticides. So buyer beware is the big message here. Adverse health effects of CACs include allergic contact dermatitis, asthma and COPD, suppressed immune function, reduced fertility, impaired embryo development and developmental disorder, mitochondrial dysfunction, and an increased risk of antimicrobial resistant infections. Right. We're, this is a place we're getting ourselves with overuse of antibiotics, and that is to include antibiotics given to the cattle we're eat consuming. Right? This is why we spend the extra money to buy, you know, food from reputable sources from farms that do um, su sustainable and um, ethical and organic farming. Right. Because you want to keep these animals, you know, the big industry wants to keep the animals from getting sick. So they give them these antibiotics. You eat the meat, you get these antibiotics. So you're like, I'm never on antibiotics. Well, and what's your diet? Because you might be same thing with poultry. Um, and there might be other things. But um, this is why we're careful with the products and the foods we eat and the products we use. Um, washing your hands is at the top of the list when it comes to effective pretension prevention of contagious illnesses and infections, but many still make the mistake of assuming you have to use antibacterial soap to get the job done. Same goes for household cleaning. Routinely disinfecting your body and surroundings may actually cause more har harm than good in the long run. Not only do they promote the development of drug resistant bacteria, right, so now you're sick and you need an antibiotic, but guess what? Oh, this antibiotic no, no longer works for this. Um, particular infection because it's been overused. The bacteria are very smart. They're super smart. And they're like, well, we'll figure out how, how to withstand this attack. And they develop, they mutate, they develop their, their ways of getting around and making, okay, so we don't have to worry about that one anymore. That, that's an, here's another little digression. This is why um, when we, uh, <clears throat> 
Okay. Um, it, I mean, it was Ted Keller, who is the guy I get glutathione from. He's the pharmacist who realized that Harvard's um, patent on acetylglutathione had expired years ago and started making acetyl, the acetylated form of glutathione in his kitchen. Anyway, he has his own skincare line called um, Vital Therapy, and he makes <clears throat> all these skincare products. And he told me years ago um, that... Uh, we, he no longer used um, grapefruit seed extract as a antibacterial in skin products because so many bacteria had become resistant to grapefruit seed extract because grapefruit seed extract was being used so much too. So just like a, um, a pharmaceutical antibiotic, a natural antibiotic. And so he uses and advised that I use the whole citrus seed spectrum. So the seed from limes, lemons, oranges, uh, tangerines, you name it, right? All of the citrus. Um, so this is, the, you know, kind of just, again, another slant on antibiotic resistance as is becoming a problem. It's also one of the big, another way to explain this is when you look at Lyme disease, chronic Lyme, why antibiotic therapy is so difficult. It is because Lyme has been... Um, gain of function engineered to be untreatable uh, as a bioweapon. That's how we have Lyme as we know it today, in case you didn't know that, but that's true. And so the Lyme bacteria, the re-engineered gain of function Lyme bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi, is very, very cunning and very, very smart. And it knows how to recognize it's under attack from an antibiotic, and then it goes into the cell wall deficient form, and it hides from the immune system while that antibiotic is still in the system. And then when it sees that the coast is clear, it comes back and it forms into a spirochete, and it starts ripping through your tissues and your joints, and you, that's when you get your pain and all those symptoms. And then, um, so it takes real mastery and great expertise to know how to mix up the antibiotic <clears throat> protocol to use antibiotics effectively against chronic Lyme, not against acute Lyme. Acute Lyme will work, will, will um, succumb very quickly if you can get it before, you know, in its early stages to doxycycline. Um, but once it's in the acute phase, uh, the chronic phase, we're in a, a whole different world. And the antibiotic um, therapies now um, must be uh, mixed up. And there's, <clears throat> there's a real art to it. There's not that many people, I don't think, um, who know how to do that well, uh, doctors. We have one here in Peterborough. His name is um, George Thompson, T-O-M without a P-S-O-N, Gordy, we call him Gordy Thompson, um, Jordy. But he is... Um, you know, try to get an appointment with him. He's a real, um, a real wonderful man and very, very smart. And um, <clears throat> even when he's doing this, has to fight with the, uh, with the drug, with the, farm, with the insurance companies because they don't want to cover antibiotics because which have to go on months and months after months and then changing with all these different antibiotics. It's quite, and to treat the co-infections that go along. Anyway, that's just a, another big bunny trail and talking about antibiotic resistance. So we don't want to use things chronically that are making uh, us, <clears throat> making bacteria more resistant so that when you really need to kill them, you can't. And that would be <clears throat> these household cleaning things, things that we're putting on our hands, soaps, dial soap with the antibacterial thing in there. You don't need it. Soap and hot water work great, just regular soap. Okay, <clears throat> so health of adverse effects of tri triclosan, um, blah, 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 cytotoxic, cellular cancer development, especially liver cancer, pro-inflammatory. Um, so again, that inflammation, uh, oxidative stress, uh, decreases cardiovascular and skeletal muscle function due to its effects on calcium signaling and muscle cells. And what improves the calcium signaling and muscle cells? Magnesium. We just talked about that, that last week. Is correlated with reproductive and de developmental defects and has been linked to higher rates of miscarriage. Um, 
a potentially serious concern, considering traces of triclosan have been found in 100% of all urine samples collected from pre pregnant women and 51% of core blood samples um, <clears throat> associated with an elevated risk of allergies, asthma, food sensitivities, especially in children under 18, promotes the proliferation of antibiotic-resistant pathogens. Okay. Okay, there's other things here. So you can read that. You can go back to my newsletter if you want to see that, um, more about that. But be careful. Now, what's really kind of cool is um, I wanted to go to this really cool app. So the um, Environmental Working Group's Healthy Living app is really cool. Um, and I'm not, you're going to laugh at me because I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't even know how to scan some a QR code with this. I know what QR codes are and everything, but I've just never been a QR code person. So I'm going to stop my share for a second just to um, just to uh, make sure that I have um, you can see this. But I did download the app. I do know how to do that. So um, let's see. I know which way to hold my phone. That'll be helpful too. I just don't like phones. Okay, so. I have here, I looked these up. I couldn't scan the QR code because I don't know how to do that. I'll have to ask Dale uh, sometime when I care. But um, I just plugged it in. You can just type in what you want, right? So it tells you um, here, the ingredient concerns. This is the environmental workers group who was like the one in this that Mercola was focusing on of featuring in this article that I just was reading from. <clears throat> ingredient concerns in these particular ones are, it says low for cancer, high for allergy, low for developmental problems, moderate uh, use, moderate use restrictions are moderate. And then you can see what the, are the ingredients, fragrance. And then it tells you more, it's supposed to tell you more about it. Yeah, about fragrance. The word fragrance or parfum on the product label represents an undisclosed mixture of various scent chemicals and ingredients use as fragrance dispersants, such as diethyl phthalate. Fragrance mixes have been associated with allergies, dermatitis, respiratory distress, and other potential effects on the reproductive system. Other concerns with when you see fragrance on their thing, on their website or their app or whatever, their information, what they're talking about. Other concerns, endocrine disruption, moderate. Non-reproductive organ system toxicity, moderate. Excitotoxicity, 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 which is like your brain cells being destroyed, low. Irritation of the skin, eyes, or lungs, moderate. And then um, they, they'll tell you all these different things. Like you go to endocrine and it'll say one or more studies show significant any disruption. If they had that, they said there was not that on this one. Um, but then it tells you all of the different ingredients, right? So you go to the, um, say you go to the dehydropropyl PEG5 linoleum chloride, and then it tells you all about that. Um, cancer, low, allergy, low, developmental, low, use restrictions, low, other concerns. Um, so you can see um, easily how this is a really um, useful app. And you can take this, that you can do this with groceries or skincare products or whatever. So you can see how this is really cool because you who are really savvy and, and take pictures of Q, QR codes and instantly insert them into an app all the time, I'm sure, um, you just do that. You're, you're in the grocery store and you're like, well, gee, I don't know. I don't really know what that is. And they have so many products. Let's go to their website. I'll share my screen again. Um, Okay, so <clears throat> if we go back, um, you can go to their website. And um, oh, we're going to talk about the Dirty Dozen, too, because I just you, I've signed up for this, but I re-signed up for it. So um, we have here, um, you can do that and you can get that, but that's not the, really the thing. I just wanted to continue to the site. Okay, uh, so you can do the same thing here. You can... Um, you know, database or whatever, but you can search. So say I wanted to put in here wet ones. 
antibacterial. Okay, so see, isn't that cool? So you don't have to scan the QR code, but I think a lot of most people that I know today would love to do that. Um, and then um, in any case, then you, you go here and you'll get the same exact thing that I just showed you on the phone. So you can do that. They have a database is huge, 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 huge. Tells how they determine the scores and everything. So take advantage of um, <clears throat> environmental work at, workers group, um, EWGs, uh, things, because we are so bombarded with um, toxins, chemicals, toxins, our food, everything. Um, I used it for <clears throat> another one here. Uh, okay, so we talked about this. Uh, this is also a Mercola article where he's talking about um, <clears throat> Cheerios, Quaker Oats, fertility lowering chemicals in these things. So that's a very short video. that you can see here um, if you wanna see it. But um, this is another thing, this chloramat, chlor, chlormaquat chloride, a pesticide and growth regulator. 92% of oat-based foods, including popular brands like Quaker Oats and Cheerios also contain the chemical. And the EPA has proposed expanding chloramaquat use to staple grains to increase yields despite potential health risks. Animal studies show chloroquat, chlormaquat is linked to re reproductive and developmental problems, raising concerns for human health. EWG opposes the EPA's plan, further is urging further investigation and recommends buying organic oat products to avoid exposure. So again, you can find that kind of thing here. But what's really interesting is when I went to this little device, uh, maybe I should go back to, um, uh, well, let's just go back to their page here. Um, they keep wanting you to donate. So you have to keep, you know, unless you want to donate or you already have donated, you want to keep, you have to keep kind of dismissing that. Um, but if we go to Quaker Oats, because they had, um, they had said EWG that they were, that they were worried about this, but I could not find, um, 23 ingredients found for Quaker Oats, but I wanted to actually find the product. Okay, so it's going to make me a liar. I'm going to go to the um, app again. So I'll stop my share for a second. Um, okay, so I went to Cheerios. Okay, so Cheerios. Uh, I did do um, Quaker Oats too, but Cheerios. Um, ingredients low, uh, so they don't have a lot of ingredients, right? Nutrition is medium, they say, processing medium. Ingredients low. Okay, so the first thing they say here is this product is not certified organic. Um, it meets EWG's criteria for a low sugar cereal. It's a good source of naturally occurring vitamin A. Per gram, it's high in protein. Per gram, it's high in naturally occurring fiber. Product has been classified as having moderate processing concerns. So then you click on that, and that's all it says about that. Um, but I did see something else where I found that information about what that means. Um, oh, I know, let's go here, processing. Okay, yeah, <clears throat> I, what I did was I went back and I hit the processing medium. Yeah, if you just hit these things, like processing medium. Um, Processed with moderate and high processing concerns generally have more artificial ingredients, more ingredients that have been significantly modified from whole foods and more ingredients overall. Estimates how much the food has been processed, considers many factors chief among them modification of the individual ingredients from whole food and number of artificial ingredients. For more information on pro processing concerns, read methodology, blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> so Cheerios, they talked about in this article, they didn't say anything about Chlormaquat and Cheerios, nor did they say anything about it in 
Um, Quaker Oats. Uh, <clears throat> same thing, uh, products with no processing concerns, identified are generally whole foods without additives. So um, anyway, they were the ones who put out this alert, EWG. But then when I look these the products up, I can't find <clears throat> that they're, they're either not caught up or whatever on that. But it's still very, very useful. You know what you should do? Like if any of you have, like you want me to look up, a, look up something, um, <clears throat> like a certain product you're concerned about or something, that would be fun. Um, just chat or let me know somehow chat or, or Q and a, or you can raise your hand, <clears throat> but you can see how this can be very, um, very important. I mean, not important, but really useful, especially when there's so much question about stuff. So you're like, I don't know, what is that ingredient? Do I have to worry about that? <clears throat> so really cool. All right. So I'll share my screen again here. Share chat with participants, and then <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Whoops, I think I want to go back there. Okay, so now let's go into a different thing. <clears throat> I thought this was pretty cool, and this is just a study, but I've seen it um, posted in several different. Um, areas <clears throat> like it was in green med info is where I first saw it. And then I couldn't go on and find it anymore on their site, although I had saved the PDF. Um, but that is consumption of, oh no, this is the one I did find on green med info or maybe not. No, <clears throat> never mind. It doesn't matter where I found it. Here's the information. Consumption of pomegranate decreases serum oxidative stress and reduces disease activity in patients with active rheumatoid arthritis. So I wanted to include this in today's uh, topic because RA, rheumatoid arthritis, is a big concern to a lot of people. I do a lot of work with people with rheumatoid arthritis, but I never thought of certainly antioxidants, right? That's kind of a given. Antioxidants are really good for autoimmune conditions uh, and for any inflammatory conditions and use glutathione for rheumatoid arthritis for that reason. I use Modricare, um, plant sterols and sterolins for rheumatoid arthritis for that reason, including that antioxidant re um, reason. <clears throat> but here we see pomegranate itself. Um, and this is really was quite provocative. Um, pomegranate extract consumption has been shown to reduce the incidence and severity of collagen-induced arthritis in mice. The objective of the study was to investigate whether pomegranate consumption affects disease activity in patients with RA in relation to their serum oxidative stress. In this pilot, 12-week open-labeled eight patients with active rheumatoid arthritis consumed Palm X, right? That's that drink. Okay, so I'm sure you can go to EWG, you know, get your QR code, scan the QR code and see all these good things about this <clears throat> product. But they drank that 10 mils a day. 10 mils is this size. You see that? It's like a little essential oil bottle. <clears throat> That's all for 12 weeks. Patients joined a status, status and serum oxidative status, joint status and serum oxidative status, their lipid peroxidation, which is not good, <clears throat> total thiols group, that's like glutathione, thiol, sulfur group, <clears throat> peroxidase one activity, were evaluated at baseline and at week 12. Six patients completed the study. Pomex consumption significantly reduced the composite disease activity index by 17%, which could be related mostly to a significant reduction in the tender joint count. And these results were associated with significant reduction in serum oxidative status and a moderate but significant increase in serum high density lipoprotein associated para, paraoxinase <clears throat> one activity. The addition of pox Palm X to serum from RA patients reduced free radical induced lipid peroxidation by up to 25%. So then <clears throat> they took um, they took the 
Palmex juice and they put it right into the blood of the RA patients and they saw that decrease on in the microscope, right? On the microscope. That is really cool. Conclusions, the pomegranate consumption reduced DAS-28 in, in rheumatoid arthritis patients. And this effect could be related to the antioxidant oxidative property of pomegranates. Dietary supp supplementation with pomegranates <clears throat> may be a useful complementary strategy to attenuate clinical symptoms in RA patients. How easy is that to say to my people with RA and to you and to your people with RA, people you know, with rheumatoid arthritis, try drinking 10 mils. Look, Pomex is like really expensive, right? But we're talking like 10 mils, 10 mils. Um, so um, that's not even an ounce. It's actually 0.34 ounces, right? So it's like a third of an ounce a day. Um, found a really good recipe too, I thought, because I'm going to talk about blueberries and IBS in a second. So let's go back. I'm going to pull up. This is a really cool recipe. Very, um, I thought, well, let's find something with blueberries and pomegranate, right? That would be fun for today. And um, so we have here um, blueberry pomegranate smoothie rep recipe. Um, six ounces of frozen blueberries, four ounces, a half cup of pomegranate juice. Wow, so then you're getting a, an awful lot. Um, but maybe it's not the Palm X, maybe it's just pomegranate juice, but not the super concentrated, right? Um, a tablespoon of flax seeds, six ounces of yogurt, and a banana to make this smoothie. And you're getting the blueberries and you're getting a nice uh, dose of pomegranate. If it wasn't the concentrated Palm X, four ounces is a lot more than three, than a third of an ounce, right, of Palm X. So um, that's really fun. It looks really pretty too. And then let's go to the blueberries. Ah, blueberries treat widespread IBS safely where drugs fail. For the over 5% of adults suffering from uncomfortable IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, could a sweet solution for persistent digestive distress come not from the pharmacy, but the produce aisle? This landmark study suggests it can it can for those failed by conventional treatments. Learn more. This was the one. Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> okay, imposing misery for over 40 million Americans. IBS ranks globally as the costliest gastrointestinal disorder with few satisfactory therapies, despite extensive drug trials. Expensive medications like rifamixin or elocitron provide limited and often transient symptom relief riddled with burdensome side effects before frequently relapsing. Alarmingly, over 70% over of IBS patients report inadequate control of their illness. Um, against this backdrop, a recent randomized trial discovered six weeks of freeze-dried blueberry powder significantly increased self-reported abdominal symptom relief by 23% over placebo in patients with longstanding IBS or dyspepsia indigestion, like, you know, acid reflux, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> unlike isolated components that narrowly target single mechanisms, the full matrix of beneficial phytochemicals and metabolites in whole blueberries appears to interact synergistically against underlying intestinal dysfunction. Beyond improving bowel disorders, regular blueberry intake lowers inflammation, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease risk, all prevalent in IBS. And unlike bitter pills, the sweet taste and accessibility of fresh berries offer compliant, favors compliance. There's a good, there's there, Dale, you and I, we, we eat blueberries like crazy every single day. We have blueberries, a lot of them. Um, not, neither of us has IBS or has ever had IBS. Uh, and that's not the reason for that. Um, we happen to like them a great deal. Um, but um, isn't that interesting? And again, I would like to point out <clears throat> The, the uh, matrix, the full matrix of beneficial phytochemicals and metabolites in whole blueberries. So what they were saying there, and this is what um, I've pointed out before uh, many times in um, alternative, in, in herbal medicine, is 
Like when a pharmaceutical company wants to see, oh my goodness, Powder Arco, this Amazon rainforest plant is so effective against cancer. Um, how does it do that? What is what is the phytochemical? What is the one phytochemical that's fighting the cancer? What's working like chemotherapy? What's what locking into the tyrosine chem kinase receptors and blocking them and blocking this pathway so the cancer can't develop? Ah. We, we'll, we'll study it out and we'll find out which one it is. And in the case of powder arco, it's Lepachol. Um, and then they take it out. Um, okay, Debbie says she uses it on her skin tags and they're gone in a week. What, Deb, are you using on your skin tags? Blueberries or pomegranate? I know it's not these. <laughs> powder arco, okay. <clears throat> Deb is really, she's really current with what I'm saying. She uses Powdarco on her skin tags and they're gone in a week. Wow, well, thanks for telling me so late. I'm so glad to know that. Um, we have tons of Powdarco here and we got a lot of people with skin tags. I usually use eggplant, cassava and extract for those. And that works too. But <clears throat> I think I probably should add, why not add Powdarco extract into the eggplant salve? And it's anti-cancer because I use eggplant salve for skin cancer. Ah, See, this is why I love these things, because I learn, I learn, I learn, I learn, I learn. Um, isn't it fun? It's so fun. So thank you, Deb. Um, so uh, Powderco, right? So Lepachol does that. Lepachol, when they took it out and they synthesized it and made a drug, it was so harsh that um, they couldn't use it in a trial because people could not tolerate it. Um, so they, in a trial, they take people who have failed everything else for cancer. Then they give them something new and see what they can do because they know they're going to, they figure they're going to die anyway. So we'll try this. Um, they couldn't even enter people into a trial. They had to stop it. That's because in Powderco, as this example I'm using, you have other constituents in the full matrix of beneficial phytochemicals and metabolites in Powderco, in that case, that mitigate toxicity, that stop the side effects that make it safe to use. So this is really cool. It's the whole blueberry. And yes, you can, they use a freeze dried blueberry powder, but you could easily go to, um, you could easily go to say Amazon and look for um, blueberry powder, organic. Freeze dried. I'm sure you'll get plenty of options there. Uh, we shall see. <clears throat> yeah. Wild blueberry, whole, whole blueberry powder, right? Wild blueberry powder, wild blueberry, freeze-dried organic powder. Um, plenty of options there. And so again, if you're not a person who eats blueberries every day or you're like not going to incorporate a couple blueberries into your daily diet, you're not going to have the blueberry pomegranate smoothie every day, the powders are easy to store, to keep, they stay fresh, and you can easily stir them into anything you want to, um, whether it be a smoothie or a yogurt or whatever, um, however you want to use it. So that's really great. Um, again, blueberries are great, great food. Uh, I had gone into, see if they had anything else really to say here that I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, this was it where I had originally seen it in the... Um, Green Med Info. And so Green Med Info, I've showed you their database before. So there are 319 abstracts. These are medical abstracts that you're going to find in the PubMed database. So when your doctor tells you there's no studies on these things, no, just say, okay, thank you, or whatever you want to say to get out of there, but and not argue if you don't want to argue. But that's just not true. Um, you can see these are all, um, <clears throat> these are all studies. And um, if we actually click on that, the Green Med Info database, and I've told them they're having trouble. <clears throat> they have so much material on there. They have a bit of trouble keeping up with everything. But there we see it now. And now that was at that point in time, there were 313 abstracts when I just showed you in that article. Since that time, there are now 325 abstracts with blueberry research, metabolic syndrome, Fasting blood glucose. So we're talking in both of these with diabetes, cognitive health, and mood based on human intervention studies. <clears throat> Again, diabetes, all of that. Mild cognitive impairment. 
better episodic memory performance. Okay, it goes on and on. And these, if you look at one of these, right? If you click on those, <clears throat> this is out of a journal. It's called, um, okay, click here to read the complete article. And it takes you to PubMed Central, Central and the National Library of Medicine. So please, you know, anybody say to me or <clears throat> let anybody say to you that there are no studies on these things. Yes, there are. You just haven't seen them because your faculty at your medical school was, um, was backed by Big Pharma, came from Big Pharma and gave you the studies they wanted you to see and not all of these other studies. And the, the, um, the wonderful database at um, Green Med Info is again, ridiculous. You can look over, like they say here, over 10,000 plus health topics um, on all different things. So you might be saying, I wanna look at pomegranate, right? So you can type that in, you, or you wanna look at whatever. Um, you can just have a blast um, and you, yeah, so uh, very important that we understand that there is a lot of science um, that people are not aware of. Health professionals, many health professionals are not aware of. <clears throat> so don't tell them, oh, you don't need that stuff. Oh, you don't, that's a bunch of baloney. Um, no, it isn't. And there are lots of studies. All right, so the dirty dozen. Uh, they update this. Um, this is, again, environmental workers group and working group or whatever, environmental working group and EWG. And they update this list every, um, every maybe every year. And so because pesticide use changes. So th these are basically the dirty dozen are ones are, are is produce kinds of produce that you really don't want to buy and eat if they're not organic right? These are the, the special ones that are specifically more toxic if they're not organic. Strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, and potatoes. However, you've got your clean 15. So you're trying for organic as much as you can, but these are the clean 15 that if you can't get organic, you don't have to sweat it. You're kind of like, okay, fine. I can't find organic or that's how I would look at it. Or you might say, I don't want to pay for organic and I can't afford organic and everything. So I'll go for these that, you know, avocados, sweet corn, pineapples, frozen and sweet peas, onions, fro frozen sweet peas, onions, papayas, eggplants, asparagus, kiwis, cabbages, cauliflower, cantaloupes, broccoli, mushrooms, honeydew melons. That's good to know, right? I don't have to kill myself. If I'm at Hannaford's and they don't have it, I don't have to stop and change and go to run over to the co-op or <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about. So um, what's really interesting here is the Dirty Dozen, one of the big ones that I used to always focus on was like bell peppers. It used to always be in this list as far as I remember and I don't see it on either list. So maybe it just doesn't, um, Again, you go there, you're back to EWG, the Dirty Dozen, and they go through each one. And they'll tell you, um, I guess they don't. I thought they would tell you a little bit about each one, but I guess they don't. Um, and I just was also reading that Kale, this was another Mercola, Joseph Mercola thing in one of his newsletters, that Kale, actually, even organic Kale is, can be a problem. So, um, yeah, the Dirty Dozen, yeah, there they are. Bell and hot peppers, I thought so. Cherries, blueberries. Okay, we're just talking about blueberries and we do eat a lot of blueberries, but we get them at the co-op and it's been really wonderful. We've, we've been able to get organic and um, strawberries and blueberries um, all year round so far. It's been really great. Um, but those are things that you would not get. You would just say, I'm not, just not gonna have that right now. I'll wait till they're in season or I can get them that way. Um, peppers, I knew that. Um, and then they have a, um, this I downloaded. If you go and you sign up for this, you can download this too to your email, but I just did it, the PDF. This is if you want to print it. 
in color. You can and put it on maybe some nice cardstock or something. You can uh, put this in your, um, yeah, the bell and hot peppers are there. Maybe I just didn't read it the first, see it the first time. Um, you know, just put it in your wallet or whatever. And so you have a quick reference guide, very handy. So what else? We talked about that and we talked, oh, yeah, we talked about that. We talked about blueberries. It's just about um, noon. Oh, what did I want to tell you? I know if I had a moment, I was going to go to my notes on, um, <clears throat> I started reading this book, um, Death by Calcium. Uh, so this like continues on the whole fascinating subject of magnesium and the importance of magnesium. And then the flip side of how we're also calcium magnesium un imbalanced. So I'm going to read you some highlights to kind of whet your appetite while we have a few minutes left here. Um, these are my notes on what file that I call that death by calcium. Uh, notes from death by calcium. <clears throat> what I try to do when I'm reading is, and sit there with my computer, my uh, word processor my, on my computer so that I can, um, so that I can then, you know, take, take, take down some notes, um, get rid of my picture there. It's coming, processing, here we go. And I think I have to stop my share and just start it again. I think I'll just read it to you. I, you don't have to follow along. Um, well, no, I will. I will. Um, okay, wait a second. Share screen. Go here. <clears throat> Isn't this cool? I could never do this on the radio. This is why I love this. Okay. <clears throat> Notes from Death by Calcium by Thomas Levy, MD, JD, forward by Ron Honeycake. Honey, honey, cake. MD, honey, honey cake. <laughs> Ron Honey Hake, the honey cake. <laughs> Since people in the US, United States consume more supplemental calcium than anywhere on the planet, why does the US have a higher instance of osteoporosis than any other country? These are just things that popped out at me, right? <clears throat> so I'm just sort of gathering my thoughts together. Again, the United States ranks 33rd in overall life expectancy, expectancy and one per, number one in the cost of health care. Death by Calcium provides a powerful reorientation that I believe will help the, re the reader find his or her way back to healthier bones, cleaner arteries, less inflamed joints, better immunity, higher energy levels, and a lowered risk of diabetes and cancer. And this book scientifically validates what I and these patients have worked so hard to create, a rational approach to better nutrition, less infection and toxicity, resulting in a more hardy constitution, and those who are willing to do the hard detective work of learning how to take care, better care of themselves. And that's us, right? That's why we're here right here between noon and one o'clock on Saturdays and all over the place, finding out other stuff and learning all the time. Okay. So anyway, it says here, actually the amount of calcium needed for healthier cell, healthy cellular function is infinitesimally small relative to the amount of calcium found in the bones. Most of the adult population has no need for significant calcium intake and the amount needed rapidly decreases with age as older individuals are already significantly accumulating calcium. And they've already prefaced like why that's bad. <clears throat> when I do my presentation on that, I'll, I'll get that all in order uh, for you. But <clears throat> listen to this. Almost without exception, osteoporotic individuals have toxic excesses of calcium outside the bounds of bone tissue. And this fact alone highlights the fallacy of calcium supplementation for the treatment of osteoporosis. And it is this excess of ingested calcium, along with calcium chronically released from osteoporotic bone, that poses the most dangerous threat to health and life as it moves in and around all the cells of the body, promoting disease wherever it accumulates. This notably includes heart disease, high blood pressure, strokes, and cancer. However, truth be known, it fuels and accelerates all chronic degenerative diseases. So this is very important because if there's one supplement most doctors are telling people to take, it's calcium, especially women with um, osteoporosis or anybody, but women, we think of postmenopausal women mostly, right? Once ca calcium deposition in non-bone structures begins, the body's compens compensatory responses pull even more calcium from the bones as a deposit of calcium is taken out of circulation. Predictably, this prompts prescriptions for additional calcium intake, which further promotes health-damaging deposits throughout the body. 
So what we got to go back to, I started my program today with vitamin K on this thing that was bleeding here. So it's going to end up with vitamin K. We need D3, but not D3 without key, vitamin K. Vitamin K, keeping that calcium in the body, that excess calcium moving out of the soft tissues and into the bone. So it's not as simple a, a situation here. <clears throat> the body-wide distribution of excess calcium is a far greater concern to the longevity and well-being of an older person than of any of the problems associated with osteoporosis. Um, it is very important to note that coronary artery calcification is also associated with a greater chance of death from all causes, not just heart attack. This means that even though calcium accumulation may be more easily detected in the coronary arteries than elsewhere in the body, this particular calcification demonstrates the universal role calcium has in accelerating the course of all chronic degenerative diseases. Not only is the coronary calcium score a good indicator of coronary artery disease and plaque burden, it is also a good indicator of the severity of chronic degenerative disease. Um, and Jean says that's probably why when I take it, it makes my shoulder joint hurt. Very interesting, Jean. Um, <clears throat> And then let's just go on a little bit. And finally, in the large study of 61,000 women mentioned above in the book, it was demonstrated that those who ingested 1,400 milligrams of calcium a day or more, not only were much more likely to die from a vascular event, but they also had increased mortality from all causes. Alarmingly, those with the highest calcium supplementation, whether from dietary and or supplemental sources, posted a death rate two and a half times higher than the groups who ingested less, 275% times higher. Um, this is a very, very important. You can see I'm in chapter three because um, that's where my notes end. But <clears throat> this is super important and it's very critical. Um, you know, I was like, I was like a milk. I really like drinking milk and I stopped drinking milk because it's a lot of calories and it's a lot of sugar. But now I'm like, I'm so glad I stopped drinking milk because and I mean milk. When I'm talking about drinking milk, I'm talking about me. I was drinking like four glasses a day because I just like it as a beverage. Put a little vanilla extract in there. I like it. Um, <clears throat> I do eat a nice helping of my whole milk, um, homemade yogurt every day. And I'm not going to stop that. That's got probably, I was looking because you can look and see how much calcium is in different things you eat. And that's got about 300 milligrams, um, which I'm fine with that in my diet. Um, and there is 250 milligrams in the thorn basic nutrients multivitamin I take, but I think it's impossible to find a multivitamin without it. But you know, if you look are looking at bone health um, supplements out there, if you're looking at things that are for your bones and stuff, you've got vitamin D, you've got calcium, and the calcium is a lot. It's like 1,200, 1,200 milligrams a day. Stop. If anything you don't do between now and I get to tell you more about this, stop taking calcium supplements and stop buying orange juice fortified with calcium and milk fortified with vitamin D and, you know, all this kind of stuff because um, it's just the opposite of what we think. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. And does that mean you're doomed to osteoporosis? Of course not. It just means that this is not the answer and it's making things worse and it makes the osteoporosis itself worse. Now, there's some conflicting studies, but when you actually um, parse them and look side by side, you can see why some studies are misleading. Um, but anyway, that's a topic for another day. I have to let you go. It's 104. Thanks for being with me, everybody. Thanks for the participation. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, and a great week next week. And I will be back on solar eclipse tomorrow. It looks like in our part of the country, um, we're going to have pretty clear skies. And I've got my glasses here for me and everybody else in the office. <clears throat> and if there happen to be clients in here at the time, I got a few extra pair. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to enjoy that. And um, I'll be back next week. Uh, you know how to reach me if you need me. You can email me. You can reach out uh, through my websites. And um, thanks very much. And